Uh, the majority of the, the, the championship team is kind of featured at midfield. So I'd say himself and Cahill would probably change because Cahill is, Cahill is probably one of our best players so far this year. Maybe probably himself and Kyle Hayes, I'd say, are probably the top two players this year. And, um, you know, Cahill is flying it at the moment, absolutely flying it. It just seems to be doing everything right. You know, he's had to buy these time to get into the team, but uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't look like he's going to be off it anytime soon. He's, he's a serious hurler and, and a lovely fellow with it as well. But yeah, the matchups look good there. I could see him putting, they, they done it last year where uh, Peter Duggan for both games. Um, in the Munster final and the one in the in the get grounds, Peter Duggan was inside. They were trying to they were trying to ice that high ball on Peter, uh, inside because like Mike is brilliant in the air, Sean is brilliant in the air. But I think I think they're trying to they're trying to get something size wise. I think they're looking at that, you know. So I I'd say you'll see Peter Duggan maybe swapping in out at times. Well, but he will he played well. Uh, I, I'm catching a few puck outs below in Ennis this year then as well. So I'd say you'll see it probably yeah swapping in and out at different times. But other than that. It looks like it looks like that would be exactly it. I'd be amazed if Tony Kelly doesn't start. I just, you know, he's he's their talisman as well. Like I, I'd just be very very surprised if he doesn't start. But who knows? Michael. Yeah, I tell you, it'd be harsh on David Reedy if he doesn't play, um, mm. because he's he's generally had a very very good Munster campaign. But if like Tony's had a decent bit of time now, you'd imagine this is kind of when they wanted him back close to hundred um, percent. And like sure. I think there's the hell of a lot on the line. Whatever about the, the Mick, Mack, Mick Mackey Cup is on the line on, on Sunday, obviously. But the direct route, lads, and just the, the the possibility of avoiding a hell of a lot of nonsense and trouble along the way, like that's huge as well. Limerick have loved going through the front door, as Kilkenny have had. And like, it's no coincidence that they've met in the last two All Ireland finals as well. Less games, more recovery, more time to prepare. Um, so I think, I tell you what, it's kind of a funny one. Like, if if Clare are beaten on Sunday, I couldn't see them getting back to an All Ireland final. But funnily enough, if Limerick are beaten on Sunday, I could see them getting back to an All Ireland final. That's why I think the pressure is on Clare. And I know they've won a league already, but just to get that direct route and get over the line in a big game, particularly against Limerick, would be huge for them. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, Limerick, Limerick's record in finals is uh, under John and the management team is absolutely ridiculous as well. I think it's something he two hundred twenty one as a manager, and then he's had like. 15 and 0, I think, Pat. 15 and 0, I think, yeah. That's yeah. what it is. Like that is, is crazy. Crazy. It's like the know. Undertaker. <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah. He lost one eventually, his last one, yeah. so hopefully he's not the last. But, not, uh, till 20, you know, not till 21, though, so you might have another good time, good while to go, yeah. Yeah, they always say about Michael Jordan that he never lost a, a final, that, you know, it was a great signing mentality, um, stuff like that. So, that's, no, that's not something that would be discussed, obviously, certainly that, but it's just, I, I don't know, there's a confidence about it. You know what I mean? There's a confidence with Limerick when you get over semi finals. I think just conference is a player in it in general because I always hated losing semi final because you know at least when you're in a final that's the last that's the, the longest you can train up to anyway that's the longest the schedule goes anyway do you know what I mean so like you're kind of prepared for it. when you lose a semi final you feel like you're you know you feel like you're locked out of a party like you're outside you can't get in like you know it's you just want to be going to a final there's less pressure in, I think than maybe in a final in a semi final and you know interestingly like, Claire's record in Leinster finals is awful. They've won just six out of 30, so it's like 20% return, whereas Limerick mm. have won 24 out of 51, so 47%. They've lost, they've lost six since 98, I think. They like, have, yeah. Isn't it crazy when you think of it, Pat? Like, mm. that it's that long since they've won and one. They've only won, they, they've only won six in their history, I think, as well, like, you know, for such a proud Hurling county. But, look, they they go very close to the weekend. I, do, I genuinely, not saying it, like, I do think Limerick will win, but I think it'll be by one, two points max, because... I rate that Clare team very highly. I think they're a serious team. You you mentioned even John David Reedy might start, and he's hurling so well. Like Ian Galvin, David Reedy, you could go on. Ryan Taylor is a massive loss, an absolute. Mm. You, you know what I mean? He was a hurler of the year for him last year. Uh, 